Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. I know mine is and we're gonna start it here in the dungeon with a few banger clutches. And this first one is something I am so excited about and I'll tell you why as I go. Of course, this is just a big pied female, but look at this. She is wrapped on a beautiful clutch of eggs. And to be honest with you, there's a little bit of a history behind this right here. Of course, this is just a pied female, which are not super uncommon. Certainly a beautiful snake. I mean, take a look at this. But did you know that we actually produced the second ever pieds in captivity? Peacall proved it out. The next year we actually produced pieds, which was the second time. But you know, all these years later, I hate, and I'm a little embarrassed to admit it, but I have never bred a female pie ball, ball python. I've always bred pied males to het females, you know, double het females, whatever the case may be. This is the very first clutch I've ever gotten from a female pied. I mean, how absolutely exciting is that? I know it's crazy because again, it's been, I don't know, 15 years since I produced the pieds and uh, I've never bred a female. And the reason for that is, is that it was easier to raise up hets and sell off females because, you know, they were $25,000 back then and then they continue to be sought after. Now I have a bunch of pied females up and this is the very first one to produce. We should have more clutches from pieds this year, but I am so excited. Let's just go ahead and see how many eggs we've got here. And here we go. Put them in here. What a bunch of pearly whites too, huh? Two, four, six, eight, nine eggs. It's been a long time coming, but it was well worth the wait. Good job, mama. Thank you for being my first pied female I ever produced. I mean, how awesome is that? That means every single one of these babies is gonna be at least a pied and maybe some pied special stuff in there. So 57 days, we're gonna find out. But this is the only awesome clutch today. We have a couple others that are crazy as well. And then this next clutch is the first shot this year for the Barney Ball Pythons. Of course, this is a chocolate pinstripe and it's bred to a banana chocolate spinner so we can get all kinds of stuff that was potentially purple animals. Listen, I don't know if it's gonna work out, but at least if we hit the animal itself and hit the odds, we can actually see what it is gonna look like. So it looks like this girl is beautifully wrapped around a clutch of eggs. Way to go, girl. Gosh, you did so good. Again, what a way to start the morning. I mean, this is so awesome. I am so excited about this clutch. Let's go ahead and just pull these eggs really quick. Get these in the egg box over here. And then we can see how many eggs she has. They're a little loose, but they're perfect sized eggs. I mean, these babies are gonna be really good size, but yet they're not so big that she had a pretty good number. Two, four, six eggs. Again, now we start the Zaga all over again. We should have four or five clutches this year that could potentially produce the Barney Ball. Two years in a row, we have missed on what I've wanted to produce. So hopefully this year we'll actually hit it. So uh, that's the second clutch of the day. It's been a minute since we fed Ben and Jerry, so let's go ahead and see what happens. I'm assuming the same thing is gonna happen that always happens. Ben's gonna take the first one and then Jerry is going to eat after Ben eats a little bit. But I could be wrong. Whoop, nope, he tried to. Come on, buddy. There he goes. All right, so Ben's got it, and I'm gonna assume that Jerry's probably not gonna take one yet. And the interesting thing about that is I really think it's kind of this symbiosis that they live together, because if you think if they both ate at the same time, it could be a log jam basically where that Y is, where their necks connect. So I almost wonder if Jerry knows that if he eats a little later, Ben's food is gonna be going down that esophagus at the same time Jerry's is gonna be following it. I have a feeling that's why Jerry doesn't eat exactly at the same time as Ben. So far, Jerry didn't take anything. Ben actually took a second one. So I'll keep trying and see if I can get Jerry to eat again. They share the same stomach, but I just think from a, a mental stimulation standpoint that Jerry likes eating, but uh, today he doesn't seem that interested. But uh, again, I've had this happen before and hopefully I'll eat here in a minute. So weirdly enough, Jerry doesn't want to eat today. I don't know, that hasn't happened in a long time, but uh, you know, they share the same stomach, so I'm sure it's no big deal, but uh, I'll just give Ben a few more fuzzies and uh, call it a day. Back with Jessica again, and that means we've got some gecko eggs. Yeah, we've got cave geckos this time. This is, um, I should learn how to say their locality, but. This is the more rare one. Yeah. This is the more rare one, got ya. And you can see they got lots of pattern on them compared yeah, to the banding really of the other ones. I love their eyes, they look like that little dragon eyes. Oh my God, they're so dope. They're She's so mad cool. at me. I know. Look at her, she's like, do don't you doing? take my eggs, I'm gonna protect my eggs. Yeah, and there right the there. eggs are right there. Oh yeah, look at the two beautiful ones too. 
They are such dope little lizards. I, I love these I love guys. Them. I have another pair of these guys together. It's actually super cute. The male protects the female. So right. anytime I go in the cage, he'll try and like get me. Oh my God, that's funny. <laughs> well, that's awesome. That's super cool. And again, it's almost here, guys. Our reopening. You can go to thereptarium.com. You can book your time slot. I've talked about the fact that we're selling our time slots from four o'clock till nine o'clock. You can buy more than one hour if you want to hang out as much as you want. Only 10 people in here. So it's a kind of unique opportunity. There's going to be 10 people and then we're going to have like five crews. So you are going to get some uh, individual care if you know what I mean. It's going to be exciting, but a lot of the time slots are selling pretty quick. So go to thereptarium.com. You can book it out. We're also going to start doing private tours under 10 people, birthday parties under 10 people and other events. So uh, it's starting to happen. Head over to thereptarium.com. Done. As you guys can see, we have made a little bit of progress with Chicken Strip. He's still a little bit, a little cage aggressive. Still not too happy about me pulling him out of the cage. But it's a lot less of a task now. I think there's a lot at play here that I may not fully understand. It's just going to take some understanding and patience on my part to really, really, really get him to where we want him to be, just like I have with Ubusuku. Most albino animals don't have the best of eyesight. So that has been something that I, I personally believe is something that comes into play here with Chicken Strip. As you can tell, like he doesn't mind the touch necessarily. He's just more about like if things come at him close. See that? See that twitch? Real quick, real quick movement. He's not too fond of. So that means he can see, but maybe he not see as well as we think he can. What he sees inside that cage is he's looking at this big, giant mass of a silhouette, potentially, coming in there and going, ah, ah, ah. And there's not really a true understanding of why that presence is there. I do believe size has a big thing to do with it. So maybe when he gets a little bit more size, there's going to be a little bit more bravery on his part. And maybe he wants to make the extra step to, type, to sort of create this interaction between him and a relationship. But uh, you know, honestly, he could stay just like this the rest of his life, and I think, and I think he still would be just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful ambassador animal for us here. You should be quickly. Guess what time it is? It's Kluber Egg time. Kluber Egg time. Kluber Egg time. It's Kluber Egg time, people. Of course, we have this first one here. It's an Abbott's Okatee corn snake. We produce a handful of these just because they are so absolutely incredible. Again, this one doesn't have the huge big bands that some of the ones have. It's a decent female, still a very pretty corn snake. But of course, this is the male it's bred to with those really broad black markings around the saddles. Ooh, I tell you what, it's just a cool thing. I mean, when it comes to a corn snake, Abbott's Okatees are definitely the pinnacle as far as the normal classic corn snakes. And this is a beautiful clutch. We've got two, four, six, eight good eggs. That's always a great way to start the Kluber egg day. This one here is another one of those red line albinos that are kind of cool, high red albino corn snakes. But this is also heifer scaleless. I mean, look at how rich that color is. I mean, just really, really vibrant for an albino corn snake. And again, that is het scaleless. So we could produce some red line scaleless, which would be <laughs> ridiculous because the albino scaleless are already really beautiful animals. You get all of that aridophore in there, which is basically the red pigment. And my gosh, that thing is going to be incredible. And this is a gorgeous clutch here. Let's see if we can pick it up all together. Looks like they're all stuck together well. And again, that's nature's way of not letting eggs roll, right? When all the eggs are stuck together, that means they're not going to roll around. And we've talked about the fact that when an egg rolls, oftentimes it can drown in the egg. Not always the case, but can happen. So we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 beautiful eggs. So hopefully we'll have some red line scaleless here in a couple months. This one is a cool one too. This of course is a California king snake here, but this is a lavender. So you can see it's in, like an albino, but it's got that purplish tone to it. And of course we're bred to a lavender snow that doesn't have the yellow bands. So it's just a solid purple snake. And when these guys hatch out, Oh my gosh, are they incredible? And this is a great clutch here. Look at those eggs from that female. Again, that was not a big female at all. And she laid a beautiful clutch of eggs. And again, half of these eggs are gonna be lavender snow and half of these eggs are gonna be lavender that are half for snow. I'm gonna candle these three eggs here because I don't know if they rolled around, but nevertheless, we've got two, four, six, eight, 10 beautiful eggs. Oh my gosh. We haven't produced lavender snows in the last couple years. So it's cool that we have several clutches on the ground this year to produce those solid purple ones. Man, I tell you, what, Lori has done such a good job of breeding colubrids this year. It's going to be so great to start hatching all of these eggs up here. And we're only about halfway done, guys. And we have second clutches on the way.
Just want to do a quick update of that spotted clutch with the see-through egg, actually incubating them here at the shop. And unfortunately, you can see this is that egg and it looks like it's starting to go bad. It's starting to do what we call sweating, which is a little wet, getting discolored. I have a feeling it's gonna go bad, which is really unfortunate. But the good news is, is look at this egg right here. This one, you can literally see if I shake a little bit, that is the actual little snake in there. So I think we're still gonna be able to have this science project work where we can see a snake developing in the egg. Unfortunately, it's not gonna be this egg that was more see-through, but we're still gonna be able to have a little window of a glimpse as the snake takes up this spot right here. So this is gonna be pretty cool. And like I said, I'll keep these here and incubate them at BHB. That way we can keep an eye on the progress. I think it's gonna be cool, something I've never seen before. Uh, sad that this egg is going bad, but really happy that this one still seems to be going well. I mentioned we've been feeding our animals a lot during this kind of lock-in uh, and sunrise has definitely packed on a few pounds I've mentioned that when people come after a couple months of not seeing these animals they're gonna be surprised to see how big these things have gotten she's had to have put at least 10 or 12 pounds on she is looking gorgeous and there is no doubt she's gonna be happy to be getting all the attention when we open up here later on just in a couple days last ball python clutch of day is actually just a pastel fema again wrapped around a beautiful clutch of eggs and she was actually bred to a calico pin yellow belly so we could produce some lemon blast calico yellow bellies which are bangers we produced the first one probably like six years ago every year we've been producing one of my favorite snakes as far as we produce every year as far as color just unbelievably beautiful let's see how many eggs this girl has come on mama Ooh, it looks like a nice clutch of eggs too Ooh, I tell you what again same thing like I said before those nice perfect size eggs big enough to have good sized babies but small enough to where they have a lot of them and this girl definitely did have a lot of eggs right here I've got to be careful mama's in the back over there eyeballing me and we'll get these eggs right here in this next box and ooh, that one almost rolled off okay looks like a beautiful clutch look at that two four six eight ten eggs i tell you what, today was a great day not one infertile egg big clutches great combinations it's awesome i mean we're 53 clutches into the year still have over 100 more to be laid so uh it is going to be ridiculous when we start hatching and uh by the way that is coming up pretty soon as a matter of fact i'll put a card right here if you guys want to really quick watch a cool snake cutting video to kind of you know get your jones on so to speak just love my girl Ivy you guys know that I don't have to tell you that but it was exciting today to have the first pied female ever lay a clutch of eggs that I've ever had it's bizarre I should have had a clutch 10, 15 years ago from a female pipe, but I never did. So I am pretty stoked about it. If you enjoyed this video, here is an entire playlist of getting snake eggs, if you wanna jones on that. Up here, you can please support my podcast channel called Checking In. On this side, you can actually subscribe to this vlog channel, turn your post notifications on. If you don't mind, have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.